email delivery is a massive thing for you and your business and your communication. And there's two really good reasons for that. Everyone uses email and you need that email to land in the inbox every time. In this video, we're gonna talk about what big changes Google and Yahoo as the two biggest senders and receivers of email on the planet are starting to enforce and how it affects you. My name's Duncan, I'm the founder and CEO of 65. I'm a Google Workspace Collaboration Qualified Engineer, and we're gonna talk about email delivery. So in February of 2024, Google and Yahoo are going to enforce some rules and some compliance settings that have been around for a very long time, but no one has really actually pushed to have them uh, set up and make things compliant. Now, the reason they're doing this is because they want to set the world up for a safe and trusted email ecosystem because, frankly, we all rely on it. So the first reason is everyone uses email, right? Everyone is affected with this and you want your email to reach the inbox. Now, you're responsible for the email that you send. So that's reason number one. You want it to arrive in the inbox. If you don't, you end up with those annoying phone calls and nothing back for days on end and you're like, why have you not responded to my email yet? Oh, well, I found it in, in the spam or in the junk or never arrived. And then you don't know why. And reason number two is you don't want anyone sending emails as you. You don't want people pretending to be you. That's how phishing scams occur. That's how people start to go and trust an email that they receive and go, this is interesting. Oh, they want my bank details. Sure, I'll click on a link and I'll submit that. That's how those fraudulent scams start. Now, this is a really big uh, problem and it's only gonna get bigger. This is one of the reasons why Google and Yahoo are pushing for this and they're gonna make these changes. It's because there's 392 billion emails that get sent and that's the number we're predicting to see in about 2026. Uh, at the moment, it's just under 390, but it goes up by about 2 billion a year. So it's a lot of emails, a lot of communication for not nearly that number of people on the planet, okay? Now, 45% of that, approximately no one really knows, but it's in the region of 45% of that email that gets sent every day is spam. And so if you're watching this, you may well be a recipient of some of that spam. And Google, uh, Yahoo and so forth have a great amount of knowledge about the email that is spam and they do an awful lot of automated uh, filing of that and getting rid of it for you. However, you need to make sure that your business stands out from the crowd by getting into this compliance zone or, or making sure that your domain and your reputation is compliant. Uh, one side note to this, if you are currently using at, at gmail.com for your business, you know, my business at gmail.com, that is a free email account. And what Google and Yahoo are gonna start to do is essentially they're going to start to devalue your communications. You're not going to you know, cut through, get cut through in that. Uh, if you're sending lots of email um, through that as your business, you're going to start to see some impact there. And you can't validate an at gmail.com, right? It's free, belongs to Google. You have no say over how that gets used and how it works, all right? So just bear that in mind, and it's probably time to go and start paying for Google Workspace. That's the commercial version of Gmail works on uh, Gmail just the same as you're used to, but like I say, it's paid, you get support for it, and you get more control and more ownership over it. So what's the potential impact here if you don't actually get this stuff done? So the first thing is well, you're gonna lose opportunity. You're gonna send emails to people, and they're not gonna see it, and you're gonna re reduce your efficiency. You're not gonna get communication as quickly. And the, com the, the comms and the, the conversations you're gonna have with people are please check your spam and junk. Nobody wants to do that. It's a waste of four words and uh, air and breath for you. It's much easier to get this stuff in place, make sure it's hitting the inbox every time. Uh, the second thing is it's gonna reduce your reputation. Your reputation is gonna take a hit, right? People expect your email to land in the inbox. They don't want to go and dig around for it in uh, their junk. You just want stuff to work and so you can get on with your day. So having people then phone you and say, oh, I found your email in my junk, meh. That's just awkward, isn't it? The last thing, probably, I mean, potentially the most important thing here, it, does, it doesn't matter if you have a domain with, and you send one or two emails a day, your domain is a target for spammers and for scammers and fraudulent activity uh, for people to pick that up and pretend to be you.
if they can use social media, for example, to connect some people to your brand, and then they can find a way of putting emails out into the internet, pretending to be you, your customers, the people you communicate with, have a level of trust with that email that arrives. And picking up those fraudulent emails, those phishing scams actually can be quite difficult. And this compliance process puts your domain into a place where it's very difficult for a scammer to use your domain and actually get an email into the inbox of a recipient. So let's talk about how you go about doing this. There's six things that, uh, or six stages really, to get your domain through to compliance. So the first one is assessment. We're gonna go through these in a bit more detail in a sec. You need to understand what you've got and how you send emails, where you send emails from, what systems you have. You need to implement the thing called DKIM. Uh, DKIM is like a certificate. It helps authenticate both ends of the process, the, the sender and the receiver. You need to configure return paths. That essentially means you want to monitor things that don't arrive and know why they don't arrive and therefore don't abuse that system some more. Then we have a reporting and enforcement system called DMARC. Number five, increase your DMARC through reporting stages up to reject. Okay, It has some, some hierarchy to it, some tiers. So we'll talk about that in a sec as well. And then the, the final one is, frankly, Google publicly gives you all this information and says, this is, this is what we're seeing about your domain. So let's dive into these in detail. So number one is assessment. So what tools do you have that send emails for you? So for example, your website, when someone fills out a form on your website, it's very likely that it creates an email. It sends them an email, probably sends you an email as well. So understand how it sends emails and make sure the source, either the website or the uh, agent that sends them for you, is correctly authenticated for your domain. Clearly, you probably use something like Gmail or Outlook or MacMail to send emails from a day-to-day -day basis. Again, make sure that the correct things have been put in place. If you are a Google Workspace customer of 6.5, we automatically put your DKIM in place for you when uh, we bring your account under our management. Same with Microsoft, uh, in your Microsoft 365 settings, they will give you the correct DKIM records to add to your domain. EDM tools, so mass mailing. If you're doing email marketing, you're sending out a mailing list uh, or an update or a newsletter, things, tools like MailChimp, campaign monitor and so forth, they all will give you the correct records um, to place. So make sure you understand that you have those tools in place and you are sending emails from. CRMs and ERP systems, if you're collecting a lot of information about your clients, you're gathering it all together into one place, you know, help desk systems, those kind of things, they all generate emails. Uh, so again, add those to your list. And the last one is often forgotten. Email, uh, email gets generated by your accounting tool. It sends invoices to people. So make sure you understand if it's sending as you or if it's sending as the tool. Uh, now, very often they actually don't send as you and you don't need to do this authentication. Zero is a good example of that. And you can see it in the from of the uh, email when you receive an invoice. So just double check it, make sure that you understand how email is being sent. If it uses your domain, it needs to be authenticated, it needs to go on the list. Step number two is implement what we call DKIM and SPF. Now, these are the two tools that help a recipient understand where the emails come from and if it's legitimate. So let's start with the first one. DKIM is like a security certificate. What it means is that when the email is generated, it gets signed. So it gets the content and it puts a signature at the bottom of it. And when the recipient gets the email, it looks at the signature that's attached to it and it says to the sender, hey, is this the correct signature? And the two things go, yes, it is, or no, it isn't. So it does two things. One is it legitimizes the sender, the, sender, the source. And the second one is it says, well, no, it's not been tampered with or altered since it left us. So there's no one in the middle that's taken my email, changed it before they delivered it. SPF is a much simpler. It's literally a list of tools that say, yep, if you receive an email from this particular tool, excellent, it's okay. Uh, imagine that your postal address, your house has say a postcode. It's almost like a list of postcodes to say, yes, I'm allowed to receive mail from those particular postcodes. So these two things ensure that email are coming from a legitimate source. 
right? And you can start to see already, this is how we start to um, discover if people are putting email into the system and pretending to be you. It's a bit like a courier, right? When you send something, a parcel, and you stick it with a courier company, you ask for a signature on delivery, it authenticates that that has arrived correctly and it's gone to the right person. This is kind of backwards. We're signing it before it goes out. And so each service that sends emails on your behalf that you got in the assessment step in list one, all of those will give you a DKIM certificate to put into your DNS. So make sure you talk to each of those providers, follow their instructions in their help manuals, get those DKIM certificates, get them validated, get them installed. And those certificates and the SPF, you add them to your DNS. A bit like when you point your website, uh, once you've bought your domain, you get some DNS records and those help you point where your email goes or where your website is. Thanks very much for watching. Just before we dive into the next three points on how to fix your email deliverability, if this has been useful so far, please like and subscribe below. And there's plenty more in, on our channel where this came from too. Step number three are return paths. Uh, most systems that send email on your behalf will do this for you automatically, but you will find there are some systems out there that don't. So what a return path does is it says, well, if the email that I send arrives at the recipient system and the recipient system says, I don't know who that is, or, you know, that might be it's misspelt. It might be they no longer work there. It has to tell someone that that's the case. And that's what the return path does. It sends a bounce notification back to the sender. And the reason that these are really important is that you don't want to keep sending email to someone when it bounces. If you keep doing that, the recipient will start to look at your reputation and go, well, you're just sending emails because you can. So uh, make sure that your tools that you are using have that system in place and that they are looking actively looking after your reputation for you. All right, step number four. Oh, DMARC. DMARC is a enforcement and reporting tool, essentially. So you publish a record on your domain and the recipient says, when I receive an email, I'm going to look at the SPF and the DKIM and I'm going to make sure that those things align, make sure they are correct and they match the source of the email. And if they don't, what they're going to do is look at the DMARC record and say, hey, sender, legit sender, source of, that matches the from address, what do I do with this? And DMARC will say, well, not a lot, just tell us about it, thanks very much. Or it will tell it to uh, take some other actions, which we'll cover in just a sec. And there's essentially in roughly three levels to this. There's reporting, quarantine, and rejection. So you are responsible for your domain, you must put this stuff in place, and you need to take your domain and your DMARC policy through that reporting into quarantine and up to rejection. And now DMARC, because of its rejection system, is the final step to that enforcement to stop people being able to send email as you. So that's why this part is really important in this process as well. So essentially you start by putting your DMARC together with a reporting level, uh, and all that does is just gather information for you. It makes sure that when you look at your list of tools that you've assessed, that you can see that those tools are all ticking the boxes and making sure that they're actually landing in the inbox. The process really is quite simple. You put that one in and you sit there and you wait for maybe a month, pick up or a couple of weeks, depends how much email you send, pick up those reports and get them back. Review the good ones, tick, review the bad ones and either identify that the bad ones are actually legitimate that you should have sent or they are good ones that you haven't correctly authenticated with DKIM and SPF yet. So you've obviously got to go back to those, fix them up, monitor it some more. So fix those issues. And then once you're comfortable with all of that, you increase your level to a quarantine. So what that does is then the recipient receives it. It says, okay, I'm going to tell you about it, but now I'm not going to put it in the inbox. I'm going to put it in spam, or I'm going to raise it with a, an administrator to review before we release it to the inbox. And again, you'll get that report, like how many have been blocked, how many have been uh, quarantined. And once you're really comfortable with that, the last step in that process is to move everything up to reject. And reject does exactly what it says on the tin. The recipient gets it, assesses it, finds out what the DMARC instructions are and says, well, this is not going to go in the inbox. I'm going to chuck it out. 
And that step there is the one that really protects your reputation from impersonation uh, and spammers using your domain to their advantage and not to yours. DMARC reporting looks a little bit like this. So you can see this one is a report for uh, mycompany.com. There are a number of emails that have been reported. Note that when you get this, that number, the total number of emails is not what you've sent. It's the number that have been reported to you. And generally that is lower than the num total number of emails that you've sent. So don't worry about it if you're not seeing, you know you've sent 100 emails in that period and you're only seeing 50. Um, part of that is that some recipient servers don't send these reports properly, um, but the vast majority do. Um, and even when they do, they don't send one for every single email that comes through. Creates an awful lot of traffic. Remember, we've got 300 and something billion emails. So if all of this is going on in the background, there's a lot of processing that goes on. As you can see, we've got a number of a percentage, which is things that are aligned. And then we've got a percentage of emails that are not aligned. And so the ones that are in this uh, red category, the 62%, those are the ones you need to look at, reassess, make sure you've got uh, connected correctly. And at some point you're gonna go, right, I've got everything. You're still gonna have some failures. Those failures are the fake ones. And then you can move forwards into the quarantine and reject phases of DMARC. And your final step, like I said, is go register on Google Postmaster Tools is a, a great little tool. They're the largest sender in the world. They give you a whole, whole bunch of information. Um, so you may as well go get it, okay? And it will give you some insight about what they are seeing about your domain. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different uh, aspects to this, which I won't go into today, um, but this one shows your spam rate. And critically here, your spam rate needs to be below 0.5% as a total. If you are going above that, then you need to do something quite seriously about this because it won't just be your broadcast emails and your newsletter that don't arrive, but it will also be your regular day-to-day -day emails uh, that you're sending to people. So if you send more than 5,000 emails on a daily basis, so if you've got a big newsletter, uh, you will need to do all of this stuff. You should do it anyway, regardless. It doesn't matter if you send one email or a million, billion, billions. Um, but if you do send more than 5,000 emails, there is one particular thing that you need to have in place that Google and your Yahoo are requesting, and that is the auto unsubscribe link. Now you can see that in this screenshot here. It is this unsubscribe uh, button that's actually up next to the sender email. Uh, that is important uh, so that the recipient can see, yes, it came from the domain, and if I want to, I can quickly unsubscribe. If you do not see this in your emails when you open it in Gmail, that will look like this. So you can see that we've got this um, generic domain here. It doesn't really tell me anything about this company whatsoever. And there's no unsubscribe link, blue one, to the right of the email address. There is one at the top in the content of the email, but this magic unsubscribe, this auto unsubscribe feature is gonna be required in uh, later this year. I think it's in the middle of 2024. Now, Google have uh, set this out with a timeline. They said in February, they'll start sending temporary errors to people, to the senders, so that they start to see uh, this a bit more visibly as to what's going wrong, what they need to fix. And then in April, they're going to just start rejecting non-compliant emails. So if it doesn't pass DKIM and SPF, if you don't have that unsubscribe link at the top of your marketing and your broadcast emails, they're just gonna start rejecting them and sending them back to you. And then in June, that one click unsubscribe uh, is going to be required, there you go, in the middle of the year. So look, there's an awful lot to take in here, uh, but your agency or your company that helps you look after your email, your IT team in a larger company will be all over this, or they should be all over this, uh, and making sure that your email delivery is up to scratch. Uh, for small businesses, just like us, we have an accountant, we don't want to go learn the tax code, um, so we have people that help us with that, uh, and we help small businesses deal with their email deliverability issues, especially when it comes to Google Workspace, CRMs, EDMs, and other things through our Google Workspace care plans. It is hard, right? If it's too hard for you, reach out to us. We can definitely help. Uh, you'll find information about this on our website. There is a link in the uh, description below. And note that this is an ongoing task, okay? You're not gonna do this once and then just go, cool, I'm, I'm done all of my emails are forever going to land in the inbox. There are other problems that stop your emails landing 
uh, you might have some wording in your signature. We've seen images in signatures cause emails to go to spam. There are a whole bunch of other reasons why uh, emails do not hit spam, even after you've done some of this stuff too. So it's a bit of an art form in trying to get those things to land and land well. So thanks very much for watching. Please reach out to us if you have any questions, if you want to know more, uh, or if you want some help implementing, implementing this stuff, check us out at 65.io.